Now at this point in the tutorial, we are now ready to go ahead and start building our state tree. However, before we really do that, it's important to take a step back and just think about state tree design. Uh, it's very important that you get that right in the beginning before you actually start making your tree and you uh, run yourself into a rabbit hole. Um, now, <clears throat> there's a really great talk on YouTube. It's called You Don't Know Mobex State Tree and it's by an engineer called uh, Max Gallo. And he goes into detail about uh, Mobex State Tree design and different ways you can go about checking out um, how to create a Mobex State Tree. Um, so if you're really interested in this, go ahead and check out that video. I'll put a link to it in the description, so feel free to check that out. Um, but in a general sense, there's two typical ways to construct your tree. Um, one is to have a single root store um, that essentially connects everything um, together. Uh, another example is to do multiple root stores. Um, and each store would have its own collection of nodes and leaves. Um, now, there's, I guess, pros and cons to each method. Um, the multiple root stores gives you gives your application a um, sense of separation of concerns. And also, when you apply your snapshots, you can do it to a smaller set of your application, um, which may be totally applicable for certain use cases. Um, however, it's a little bit difficult to communicate between stores um, when you have multiple root stores. On the flip side, with a single root store approach, it is very easy to communicate within um, other objects in the tree, um, and you can do so in a very non-hacky way. Um, in addition, your entire application will have a whole immutable structure because your snapshots will um, include your entire tree, which is pretty handy. Um, now, I haven't really experimented a lot with the multiple root stores. I've personally only really used the single root store in my applications, um, but I've really liked this approach a lot. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. So I, I would recommend using the single root store approach, um, but the multiple root store approach is completely valid. Um, you're welcome to use that as well. All right, so now I'm gonna scroll up and show you an example of what a real world tree would look like in a real production application. Um, and this is really something that I actually built for a client. Um, so it would kind of look similar to this. Um, in, in a general sense, I really had three main um, trees initially. One was like a navigation tree um, that essentially contained the state of my um, navigation. And, you know, such as like the current route and, you know, the ID and stuff like that. Um, then I had like an, a, a standard application tree that basically uh, held all of my um, application model within it, such as, you know, like if a, um, like a list of swimmers and each swimmer would have a set of workouts. Um, and then I also had like this coach object. So it's somewhere in the sense of that. And then I also had a separate store that held all of my assets. Um, this app in particular had a sense of internationalization. Um, so I had a whole asset store that managed um, basically all the assets and how they were deployed on each screen. Uh, but what I ended up doing was I essentially created a, um, you know, a node above this called the root store that essentially connected all three, three of these together. And that allowed, um, you know, my, my assets functions were able to go up to the tree and then down to the application component to get like certain properties that it needed. Um, same thing with the navigation route. And I found this to be really, really helpful. Um, and again, you're, it's up to you on how you want to design it, but, but this is something that worked well for me. Now, while I'm here, I do want to revisit this really quickly just to instill this into you. Um, it's the whole tree node versus leaf concept. Um, just for context, this entire thing here um, in this design sense would be considered a tree itself. Each one of these circles here these would represent a node throughout the tree, um, which is this. And then uh, the small text that you would see in each one of these nodes, these would represent a leaf. So again, trees, nodes, and leaves. Um, and there's some acronyms for these as well. So like a tree is also typically called a store pretty often. 
Um, and then a node is often called a model. And a leaf is also often referred to as a property. All right, so now that we got that down, I am gonna scroll up to this top one here. And this is gonna be the tree that we're gonna use for our tutorial. And this one is much simpler than the one that you saw below. This, um, our tutorial tree here, is just gonna have a root store, which is really not needed, but I'm just kind of doing this um, just for a consistency sake, so you can kind of get an under understanding of how we would typically use it. And that restore, or that root store, is only gonna have one node as a child, and that's gonna be the employer node. And there's only gonna be one employer in this application. Um, this employer is gonna have two leaves, name and location, and it's gonna have several, um, basically a dynamic list of employee uh, child nodes. And each one of these employee child nodes is gonna have uh, a few leaves on it, specifically name and hours worked. There's also some computed leaves on there too, but I'll just kind of get into those later. So this is how our tree is gonna look. Now that we understand this, it's okay to go ahead and start building our tree uh, in our application. Um, so go back to your code editor and under SRC, let's go ahead and create a new directory. And let's call that MST. And within MST, let's go ahead and create a file. And we're just gonna do one in this case since our tree is rather small. We'll just call it index.ts. And we're gonna go ahead and start creating our tree. So the first thing we can do is we can just import something from mobxstate tree. Just import types from mobxstate tree. Uh, this types essentially allows us to uh, define our nodes and tree. Um, so if you remember from my diagram, see if I can open it up. We had one root store and then an employee node or employer node and several employee uh, nodes. Let's first create our root model. So I'll do const root model equals types dot and then we're going to specify model. And this model is actually going to have two parameters. The first one is going to be the name of our node. And for this one, I'll just specify root. And then I'll do comma. And then um, this one's going to take in an object. And this object is going to contain uh, really one of two things. It's going to contain a leaf or a child node. Um, in this case, we'll, we're going to have just one child node. This could be employer. Um, and this is going to take a model which we haven't created yet, but it's gonna be employer model. So as you can imagine, the next thing that we'll actually have to do is we're gonna create our um, employer model or in otherwise known as an employer node. We'll do const employer model. We're gonna set that equal to types.model. The first thing is gonna be the name I'll just call that employer. Then it's gonna take in an object and then I'll specify my leaves and my child nodes. So this employer one, it's gonna have a few leaves. The first one's gonna be ID and then I'm gonna type in types and then hit dot and then hit control space in order to see all the different options. Um, so if you, if you can kind of look at these, these may look a little familiar there's all these different standard types, such as array, boolean, uh, date. We should have like integer and string in there as well. In this case, I'm gonna use something called an identifier. And this is just basically, um, it's a unique identifier um, for whatever model we have. Uh, and you can use either um, the standard identifier, which is a string, or you can use identifier number, which is you know basically a unique number instead of a string. Um, for our situation, since we're using UUID, that uses a string, so we'll just use the standard identifier. And we'll hit a comma there, and we'll create another leaf 
called name and we're going to set this equal to types.string and then we're going to do another uh, leaf called location and we'll set that equal to types.string as well um, then we will create uh, a basically a child node it's actually going to be several child nodes um, I'm going to set this equal to or I'm, I'm going to specify a field called employees and this is going to take in types dot array and this is going to be our um, we haven't created this yet but it's going to be our employee model all right so um, naturally just go ahead and create our base employee model just so we can get rid of this compiler error so let's say const employee model equals types dot model and specify the name of employee. Second parameter is the object of leaves and child nodes. So let's specify um, an ID here as well. Types dot identifier. Oops. And then I'll specify a name of types dot string and one more called hours worked and this is actually going to be a number um, now what we'll do is we'll have to export our root model and you can just do that as a singleton all right that looks good and now that I'm going to do three other exports, and this is really for TypeScript specific stuff. So if you don't use TypeScript, if you're not interested, don't worry about this next part. Um, but if you are, this is highly valuable throughout your application. So I'll just specify export type, and then I'll specify my root. And you're going to use a thing called instance, and this comes from Mobic State Tree. And this is essentially like a generator function. And it takes in a property of, and you can specify type of, and then um, your root model here. So specify root model. And, and what this does, it, it just essentially extracts out the TypeScript typings um, from your uh, model or your node. So if you hover over there, you can see, um, you can see that right there. Basically, this is like your typings. Um, I'm also going to do the same for employer and employee. So um, it's basically the same thing. So I'll just specify employer and I can specify instance type of and then employer model. I'll do the same thing for employee. And there, I'm good to go. So anytime we want to reference the typings of any of these nodes, we can just um, we can just import these types right here. So I'll save that, and now our base tree is created and ready to go. Um, so now we're at the point where we want to go ahead and start integrating this into our React app. All right, I think we're at a good stopping point for this video. Just to kind of wrap up, we just created our base MobX state tree model. Um, containing a set of nodes and leaves. And I think we have a pretty good design um, moving forward. Um, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and take this and we'll inject it into our React application. See you in the next video.